This is the first section of chapter one on circular motion, and this section is on angular speed. So let's imagine we've got two particles moving with circular motion around an origin here. And let's say it took five seconds for a particle to move around this arc here, uh, this purple line, and it took the same five seconds for this particle to move around a at the same angle in the same time span, let's say five seconds. Well, both of these particles would have the same angular speed. That is, they go around the same angle in the same time span. However, um, you should know that really the one around the outside is going to have to move faster to keep up with this one. So they have a different linear speed. So although this has a faster linear speed, and this one, the one on the inside, the purple one, they have the same angular speed because they have uh, gone around in a circular motion through the same angle. So angular speed is basically this arc moved through in a second. That's the time scale we used. And this arc, this angle that we're interested in, we measure in radians. So the units for angular speed are radians per second. How much angle have you turned through in a second? And linear speed is basically the length of this arc traveled or moved through in a second. That's uh, its units are meters per second. Now, the meters part, the length moved in a second, we can work out by working out this arc length, which would be the radius times by this angle subtended here and this you would have learnt in your pure two how to find the arc length uh, when you've got the radius and you've got the angle in radians now for angular speed we use the greek letter omega to represent uh, angular speed and for linear speed uh, we just use V for velocity and the next bit is basically going to show us how we convert between linear speed and angular speed. So if we start with velocity, V for velocity, we know we can get uh, velocity by differentiating the displacement with respect to time. Now the displacement, if we're looking at this arc length here, that's r theta. So I can replace x with r theta. Now I can move the theta. So it's next to the d here. I'm basically not changing anything. I'm just write, writing in a, a different form and write this as r times by d theta dt. And I can write the d theta dt just as theta with a little dot there to show that it's been differentiated. So the differentiated theta, this r dot, that there represents the angular speed. So now we have a way of converting linear speed to uh, angular speed. And it, we've got this formula here, v equals r times by the angular speed. And we use the letter omega for that. So we have r E, uh, v equals r times omega. So that means if I want to convert um, angular speed to linear speed, I could say omega is equal to v over r. And lastly, if you get um, a question where it gives you the revolutions per minute, which we can call the RPM, then we want to convert that to the angular speed. The way that we do that is we multiply the RPM by two pi. That basically tells us how many radians it's turning through in a minute. Then divide it by 60 to work out basically the angle it's turning through in one second, which is the angular velocity and remember that we're multiplying by 2 pi because the angle is given in radians so this will convert it into radians per second which is our units for angular speed example one 
a particle moves in a circle of radius four with speed two meters per second. Calculate the angular speed. So we'll start off with our formula, which is linear speed is equal to r, the radius, times by the uh, angular speed. So we just replace v with two, two meters per second, and the radius is four. And we're trying to work out omega, so it's, that's easy enough to rearrange. Divide both sides by four, so we get angle speed, angular speed is two over four, or half, and our units are radians per second. So radians per second. Example two, express that angular speed of 200 revolutions per minute in radians per second. Okay, so we're gonna take our RPM, remember the form is RPM, times by two pi, that tells us the angle it moves through in a minute, and we divide that by 60 because we want to work out how, uh, how much angle it moves through in a second. So we'll do 200, times by two pi divided by 60. So that's going to be 400 pi over 60. So that simplifies to 20 over three pi radians per second. Or if we change that to a decimal, three significant figures would be 20.9 radians per second. Example three, a particle moves around a circle in 10 seconds at a constant speed of 15 meters per second. Calculate the angular speed of the particle and the radius of the circle. Okay, so let's start with the first bit where we've got here that a particle moves around a circle in 10 seconds. Right now, what does that mean? If it moves around a circle in 10 seconds, that means that the particle has done two pi in 10 seconds. We need to know the angle per second to work out the angular speed. So we divide both sides by 10. And then we'll get one fifth pi in one second. Okay, so that's our angular velocity. So one fifth pi radians per second. And if we convert that to a decimal to three significant figures, that will be 0 0.628 radians per second. So now that we have the angular speed, we can use our formula to convert the angular speed into the um, linear velocity since we have the radius. So using that formula, our velocity is going to be 15. Radius is what we're trying to find. And then the angular speed is one fifth pi. So I'll use the exact value there. So you can rearrange this to find R. So times in both sides by five and divided by pi, we get the radius as 75 over pi. Um, and if we change that to decimals, we'll get a radius as 23 point, three significant figures, nine centimeters. So you should now be able to do exercise 1A on pages three to four. And here's a recap of this first section.